stressful week up here in the skybox in the corner of the level. Thanks for joining me. I was not sure until maybe an hour ago that I'd be able to stream tonight. I'm glad that I can, because we've got a very interesting topic to cover and illustrate. Um, at the end of the last stream, we were talking about off-screen canvas, which is this idea, excuse me, this idea that you can, uh, you can create a kind of uh, canvas-like thingamabob that you throw over the wall to a web worker to draw stuff um, without being on the main thread. And I thought maybe there was some interesting follow-up or something. But we can completely forget about it. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it here for now. But um, basically, uh, one or two streams ago, I said that the Flash version of the Wireworld player that we are reconstructing in JavaScript, um, you know, it's got some clever tricks and we've used them all, more or less. Aside from doing some WebAssembly type stuff, you know, the speed, the performance that we're seeing here um, is feature-wise matched in the Oh, one second. Da, da, da. Okay. Oh, wait. Wrong. Uh, CD. There we go. There we are. That's what I was talking about. That the features in this version that make it go fast uh, are all copied over to here and that any other uh, trick to speeding it up would be new ground. Which is exciting. I'm excited to do some things that I've never done before. But actually there is a trick that the uh, Flash version of the Wireworld player employs uh, that I hadn't tried in the browser that I had just written off. I was like, oh, you know what? There's no way that this is going to be any faster in the browser. Uh, basically, I assumed that the the just-in-time compilation of JavaScript in browsers would uh, make the same optimizations that we're essentially going to do in JavaScript ahead of time today. Um, I just thought, there's, there's no way. There's no way that the optimization that the JIT compiler could do would just leave this on the table. Um, and we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit more after I do the mission statement again. Um, but it turns out I was wrong. And the degree to which I was wrong is enormous. Um, disclaimer, sometimes I test some stuff uh, in a branch uh, when I'm not live streaming just to make sure that, you know, it's worth your time, I guess. And this definitely is worth your time. Uh, as you know, the uh, Wireworld player runs slower while the simulation is competing with OBS to live stream and record my entire screen for three hours, right? So you're going to see um, this simulation run a whole lot faster, maybe twice as fast uh, in your browser. Um, because you're not live streaming, um, as it does when I'm not live streaming or recording. After today, it's going to be twice as fast again. Uh, we're going to see on the live stream, I'm predicting, um, a doubling of the achievable um, simulation speed. I know for a fact that it's double the speed when I'm not streaming. So we're aiming for something like 2600, um, although that's with a lot of apps open too. So we'll see. But I'm expecting 
like a roughly 200% performance boost based on what I um, experimented with on uh, over the weekend. First though, um, there's some interesting stuff that Firefox can shed light on that I would like to address before going into the strategy that we're talking about, which um, should I call it a strategy? What do I previously call strategies? Iteration. Um, strategy two. List them. Okay. Um, yeah, I might as well call this strategy five. Are we up to five? Strategy two. Oh, did I never put strategy three in? As a here we go. Strategy three. And yeah, I forgot to tag it. Um, one second. Strategy three. And then. Okay, I'll tag this as strategy three. Strategy three. Let me check the strategy notes. Yeah, okay. Make this bigger. So today is all about strategy four. Which is called scalarization. A name that I'm borrowing from a friend who suggested it. But before I do that, we are going to go quickly through the why and how. Zoom in. Okay, so once again, it's Wire World Wednesday. Why do these exist? Because the before this stream, the last time I worked on this was 2011, and I made it in Flash, and that is gone. And it's good to have it back and in working order so that people who are interested in experimenting with it have an opportunity to do so just by clicking a link in their browser. Res Mason GitHub IO Wireworld Player. Boom. There it is. No need to download anything. No need to run any weird custom plugin. It just works in the browser. Um, no install friction. You don't have to install it. Um, yeah, there's really no online alternatives. Um, it's good to do some programming in JavaScript or a similarly accessible language uh, in public. Um, realistically, right? So you get to see me make mistakes and fix them. Um, I want to hype this fancy uh, phenomenon, this fancy system of uh, performing logic visually. Um, I want to explore with types of storytelling. Um, and at this point, you know how Wireworld works, basically. Um, we're seeing a lot of interesting flickering happening here that conforms to some simple uh, rules that govern their behavior. Four colors, four rules, only one of which is really at all complicated, and it's, it's barely complicated, allow us to be able to express things that look like circuits and work like circuits, so that when you allow them to, to run and run and run and run, they can, uh, in the proper design, uh, they can perform mathematical and logical operations, and even full-blown computation, like general purpose computation. Good stuff. Guiding principles, blah, 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 let's move on. So, um, just going to copy paste. Okay, so you may recall that the way that Wireworld currently works is in the engine
we initialize a list of cells where each of these is a cell, each little pixel has a corresponding cell, as long as it's not a dead cell, a background cell. Uh, the cells have a list of their neighbors that aren't dead, so this cell has a list of neighbors containing this cell and this cell, for example, um, and all the other information necessary to A, represent its state, um, and B, um, indicate where it is in the picture. But the logic that we perform has nothing to do with its position. It has everything to do with its state and its neighbors. And in fact, we don't even copy down its state. We have its initial state, so we can reset the simulation whenever we want. But aside from its number of neighbors and that information that helps us um, identify what's, what pixel we're talking about, um, all it has are these three fields. Head count, which we use to count the number of neighbors of a cell that have a uh, certain state, the head state. Is wire, which helps us determine whether the cell has a color or is in this wire state. And next, which allows a cell to literally point to any other arbitrary cell in the simulation. And this next allows us to link cells together not based on their state or whether they have any uh, relationship, but just based on needing to make lists that are like the list of all the heads, the list of all the tails, the list of all the new heads. So that in our update function, we can create a new list of heads. There we go. Uh, yeah. We can create a new list of heads based on the neighbors of the current heads. And then we replace the heads with the tails. And we replace the, sorry, we replace the tails with the heads and we replace the heads with the new heads. One moment, I need to take a quick look at work slack. Stressful week. Ah, ETA on the builds. Give me one second. Thank you. 
Sorry, I need just another minute. Cool, and we're back. So all I was saying was, um, we have these relationships between cells in a big list of cells. It's not every cell in the image, it's every cell that can change. Namely the ones that have some, uh, some color or brightness to them. And um, the cells list their neighbors so they can look at their neighbors and the cells have a next property so that we can chain them together to form lists without um, creating and destroying arrays unnecessarily. Uh, and then besides that, they have a bunch of other fields that are like numbers and a boolean down here. In other words, the data that we're operating on is an array of objects with these names and these values. Let's draw that real quick. So here's an array. It's got an object. And let's say it's got uh, x, y, and next. And uh, pals. So we've got an array of a bunch of objects that have these fields. If you wanted to look at all the pals, actually, you know, pals here is like an array of objects. So if you wanted to look at a current, like if you have a cell, one of these things, and you want to look at the pals y property, then you would say um, cell dot pals i dot y. So let's look at this. We have an object. We use the dot operator to look up a property. That's an array. We look up an in, uh, a value at a certain index in that array. And then dot y, we look up the property on that value. So that's an object, and we look it up again. Here's our plan. At the end of tonight,
We're going to have this instead. I really should find another way of, uh, here we go, dot, 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 hands getting tired. So at the end of the night, we're going to take all of these values that are in these objects that we call cells that are in this array. We're going to flatten it into an array that just contains values. Not only that, but these values are all going to be integers. All of them will be integers. So this idea of a next that points to another object, we're going to have to replace that with a number, like 5. And the idea is this number will be used to look up the object in the list of all cells. Or rather, it'll be used mathematically to look up the data for a cell in this long, flat array. Gonna undo that. Let's look at how the syntax changes. So at the end here, um, instead of this, we're gonna have um, syntax like this. Uh, cells um, cell um, plus pals underscore or sorry let me try this again cell address plus pals underscore plus i and that gets wrapped inside another call to cells and then plus y in other words Everything we're going to do is just going to turn into looking things up in the array once or twice and then adding together integers that represent these addresses in a, in a cell. So the, that's, that's what we're going to do today. And I'm calling this scale... Ugh. Why am I trying to write in here when I can just type stuff? So that this is strategy four, scalarization. We're turning this into this. For speed. Anyway, enough of that. Um, close that. But yeah, before we dive into that, we're first going to make some minor improvements that, as I was saying, Firefox can help us take a look at. Uh, in Firefox, if I go to the Memory tab in the Web Inspector, I can take a photo and look at this. We've got an array buffer, which represents the... what does that represent? That represents the pixels that are in our image. Um, but then we have this array. There's 649 of them. And it's taking up a lot of the space. And if we run this, and we take another snapshot... Okay. The array, the count of arrays has gone down. And... Sorry, hang on. Let me just make sure that we're talking about the same... There we go, okay. So yeah, 652 arrays. Um, and then we run this for a while and we take another snapshot. So the number of arrays is down, but the size that, oh, sorry. No, the number of arrays has gone up, excuse me. And the size has gone up. And the array buffer 
is basically the same. And then we take another picture. Um, six. Okay, so arrays are now down from 22 mega, uh, mebibit, mebibytes um, and 1,400 of them down to 3 mebibytes and 650 of them. And so what's happening is something in our web app is creating a bunch of arrays and at some point Firefox gets fed up and gets rid of the ones that aren't being used anymore. So basically we are littering and Firefox is cleaning up after us. Which, by the way, happens all the time. Um, this just doesn't seem necessary, so we're going to address this. Um, so let's see. Right, so first of all, um, what is that array buffer? That array buffer is in paper.js, which remember is responsible for drawing this stuff. Here, check this out. Image data and pixel bytes. It turns out pixel bytes and image data are basically the same. This set call is completely unnecessary. And pixel bytes is unnecessary. As long as we make image data the source of pixels here. So the whole point of that gunk that we've got up here, let's see, is buffer used anywhere? It's not, so I can get rid of that. Image data, pixels. Image data, pixels. So this buffer should be, I think, image data dot data dot buffer. Okay, image data is an object we create with the canvas. Um, this canvas, right? It represents a it represents a 2D array of pixel information. Um, it has its own data property that is um, a uint 8 array that represents the red, green, blue, and alpha values in bytes. And that has a buffer that is the array buffer in s that, that this data view points at, this typed array points at. So we're gonna take that buffer and say, you know what? Pretend that that's not a bunch of um, image bytes. Pretend that's a bunch of uh, unsigned 32-bit integers, AKA the colors that we chose for our simulation. And so pixels is now based on that. And we should no longer require that set. Okay, gonna clear this, refresh. Still works. Okay. That was just bugging me. Um, right, so no need for pixel bytes. Pixel bytes is gone. Um, rename pixel index. Okay, give me one second. Um, do, do, do. Paper. Run prettier. Cool. Um, and we're gonna say, oh, sorry, hang on. Did I end up labeling? Yes, okay. Just making sure all the tags that I wanted to put in the project are there. Okay, so we just, um, here, let me, yeah. Removed, unnecessary, um, image, uh, here, removed, unnecessary, typed, 
arrays and um, calls and uh, what, what would you call it? Data copying from paper. There we go. Cool. Rename pixel index to grid index, right? So pixel index. We're going to rename this grid index. Um, you know what? We're going to rename pixels here to grid. Even though these are pixels. Um, no, am I going to do that? Yeah, pixel index is fine. I'll keep it as that. Um, but in the engine, we are going to rename pixel index to grid index. And we are going to rename head and tail indices to head and tail pixel indices. No, sorry, grid indices. So we have a better understanding of what these are. Um, and then in paper, head or tail, head or tail indices become head or tail grid indices. Let's just make sure that that still works. Nope, we broke it. Uh, head grid indices is undefined. Where? Paper.js. Head grid indices. Head grid indices. Tail grid indices. Tail grid indices. What are you talking about? Line 71. Gonna clear cache and try again. Okay, <laughs> the cache needs to be. Okay, disable cache. There we go. Still works. Rename pixel index to grid index. Indices to grid indices. Yep. engine messagings right so down here I figured um, you know let's actually clean this up a bit so make cell and initialize should be next to each other um, reset is fine update is fine render is fine but here advance start turbo and stop turbo um, Yeah, if you don't mind, I would like these to go up here. Would I? No. Never mind. The order of the functions is fine, because they are grouped together. But I am going to do this. Const engine equals. And the idea is, because we have these methods here... Boom. Um, and we're calling them by name. This switch case is actually needlessly complicated. So now we have an engine object, and we're going to say engine. Sorry, one second.
back again. Sorry about that, I thought I heard someone knocking at the door. Okay, so engine, event.data.type, which are these strings. If that exists, then call it with event.data.args. And all this can go away. And we're left with that. Let's try that. Missing name after the dot operator, so I've got this, let's see, engine data type. So this should work. Yeah. I just want to null check. Right. Question dot? There we go. Okay. Event data args is undefined. Event data args. Ah, right. Or empty array. Cool, that's working. Just slims things down. Oh, I did a bunch of things all together, didn't I? Okay, hang on. Um, Stage that. Okay. Renamed pixel index and head tail indices to grid indices. Because they're not just going to be used for pixels, um, they literally represent where a cell is in the grid. Um, and then run prettier. No change. Uh, replacing engine switch statement engine message handlers switch statement replacing engine web workers message handlers switch statement with a lookup into uh, with an API map that's really what it is if you think about it we just gave engine an explicit API, and we're not all that worried about, you know, switching over this, switching over that, no need. Um, handle engine message can stay the way that it is in wireworld.js for now, because we just don't have many of them. So this is fine. I might clean this up eventually, but no rush. Okay. Um, and actually, what I meant to be doing before the scalarization strategy four is to simplify GC. Let me see. Delete properties of the last render. So in Wireworld, we've got this idea that there's a last render and a queued render. And what we're going to do is here when we get it when we get a new render, we're going to say if last render isn't null um, for const prop uh, in last render, delete last render prop. This is going to go ahead and delete all the fields of the last render object, which should hint to the browser that they can be deleted. Let's see. No, the arrays are still going up in size. But this is cool. We're down to two, th uh, two array buffers, three mebibytes each, and that corresponds with the two um, images that comprise this uh, this graphic. 
I mean, technically we could get rid of one of those buffers because the image is only drawn once, but in the future, we're probably going to add edit capabilities to the Wireworld web app. Um, so it does make sense to keep it around. And it's just, it's just one and a half megabytes, so we can, we can afford that. Um, this interests me though. Why do we still have arrays? Oh, I know why. Here, hang on. Engine.js. It's an engine because whenever we render, oops, whenever we render an engine, we're creating another two arrays every time we render. So we are going to. Um, dot length equals zero. We're going to reuse the head and tail grid indices from now on. So they're going to go up here. And that way, whenever we... Sorry, one second. Um, restored restored tail grid indices. Just to distinguish between these and the things that actually go into the renderer. Okay, now let's try. Snapshot. And snapshot. You know what? Let me do a garbage collect if that's even possible. Here we go. Let us delete the snapshots. <laughs> Is there a way to trigger garbage collect? Nah, whatever. Um, gonna clear these snapshots and take a photo. 754, take a photo, 48, Honestly, we're looking at the incremental garbage collector taking its time doing stuff, I think. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, reload it. Snapshot. That's weird. Delete. Refresh, snapshot 652, and snapshot 939. Where are these arrays coming from? 1285. We only ever create three of these. And then in Wireworld, we are deleting them every time. Console.log prop. Yeah, so those should be going away. And then last render equals null. It is nice to see that it always starts at 652 instances of array. 810, okay. I'm gonna leave this alone for now, but I suspect that maybe because there's so many other arrays, there's more work for the garbage collector to do, to inspect, I don't know. I am gonna keep this stuff in here though. Um, Maybe not last render equals null, because it's immediately assigned a new value. Um, okay. So that was delete, whoops, delete properties of last render. Reuse indices arrays in engine render. Delete unused cells, DS, and engine. This is not something we can do yet. 
because it comes after Skillerize. So tell you what, let's leave it at that for now. Um, reusing as many, yeah, reusing as many, um, quantities as possible to reduce um, what do you call it? To reduce the amount of allocations over time. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Cool. Let's get back into the meat of it. So, strategy four. We're going to convert our cells from objects to arrays. We're going to change all their properties to indices. Right. In this case, showing beats telling. So, how do we take something like this? make cell and turn it into a flat array or not make cell. How do we take all of the cells and turn it into a flat array? Well, we do it step by step. We're going to start by turning the cells into flat arrays and then we're going to turn them into flat arrays of integers so that there's no null, there's no false, there's no array. And once cells are flat, we're going to turn, sorry, once each cell is an array, which makes cells up here an array of arrays, we're going to flatten that so cells is just a flat array. That's our, uh, that's our strategy for implementing this tonight. So, um, here's what I'm going to do. Here, I'm going to close Firefox for now. I'm going to close Chrome for now. Quit complaining, Chrome. There we go. Okay. Cool. Okay. <sighs> Here's how you turn an object into an array. You replace that curly brace with a square bracket. You replace that curly brace with a square, square bracket. What else? Every colon that we see uh, is a key value. These are key values, but we're using shorthand like that. So we're just going to grab these and in a new full, uh, a new file, we get rid of everything but the field name and we turn that into a bunch of comments like this. And we just paste them there. And then every colon that we see here, we get rid of. There we go. So now a cell is just an array. And that's cool and all, but like, what is this supposed to mean? How do you, how do you look this up? Well, we need to store uh, the index of x in a cell array and the index of first state in a cell array, etc. So over here, we need to do something like const and we're going to turn these names of these fields into variables that have this underscore that's just going to notate that this is an index into an array. And these are values, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you know, if we test this, it immediately explodes. No surprise there. Um, we need to go around and find every reference to one of these that comes after a period, like these. Cell.neighbors, cell.numneighbors, cell.numneighbors, first date, grid index, grid index, etc. And we're going to replace these with an array that is wrapped around that thing and we put the underscore on the end. So now let's try that. 
Still broken. What's the complaint? Undefined is not an object. Evaluating cell grid. X plus X offset. Lot. Okay, cell grid. Neighbor is cell grid Y. Ah, here we go. So up here we were using some ECMAScript shorthand to get the X and Y properties of a cell. But this is now... Well, we could do this. <laughs> Just because the X and Y properties are the first and second properties in the cell array. But we're going to make it more explicit. Why not? Um... equals cell, and we're going to grab that, and we're going to look it up by that property. There it is, and play, and turbo, and it all still works, which is pretty interesting if you think about it. We just turned every cell from an object into an array that contains values. Cool. Run prettier. No change converted every cell from an object with fields to an array of values. Now what? Well, remember, we've got us we've got this num neighbors which tells us the length of neighbors here. Um, but neighbors it's it's weird. It's an array, right? Um Instead of this, why don't we do this? We can flatten this array. We can be like, well, there's there's no more than eight neighbors. So we can be like, null, 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 null. And so the neighbors end up shoved into this array. Except instead of doing that, we're going to do shorthand array eight dot fill null. And then we are going to call flat on this array. So all of these nulls end up in the array. And then neighbors here is at 5 still, but everything after neighbors needs 7 more values tacked onto it. There we go. So now the index of neighbors stays the same, but everything else, it jumps from 5 to 13, 14, 15, 16. And that's because we need those spaces between 5 and 13 to store neighbors, right? Oops, neighbors. There we go. But remember, right now, we're looking for neighbors like this, right? Cell neighbors gives us an array and then we look it up. So now we need to look for any reference to neighbors like this. Neighbors, neighbors i. So we're gonna say cell neighbors plus i. So now when we look into the neighbors list, we're actually looking into the cell that has a neighbors list as part of it. This is now an offset in the indices in the cell. And then up here, cell neighbors plus cell num neighbors. Let's try that. Let's see what happens. Still works. Still works. That's pretty cool. So we got the array out of there. So now it's just a flat array. Um, now everything is either an integer, is a reference to a cell, or is uh, a boolean. Let's deal with this boolean real quick. So here, I'll commit this work. Run prettier. No change. Um, cell neighbors now occupy the cell rather than an array inside it. Cool. Right, is wire. So 
we're going to turn iswire into an integer, which is really easy because iswire is currently a boolean and we can basically replace false with zero and true with one wherever iswire is used. So here iswire is zero, is, iswire is one, if neighbor iswire is equal to one. That's not really necessary in JavaScript, but I'm going to do it anyway because I just I want it. <laughs> I want this equivalence to be explicit. Is wire is false goes to zero. Is wire is true, that's a one. Okay, now let's try that. Still works. No change. Converted is uh, converted eng uh, cells is wire from a boolean to an integer. Let me just give this a little more room. Okay. Cool. Now for the first tricky bit. We don't want references to cells to be in here. We want to give each cell, I mean, each cell currently has an address in the cells list, which is called the index. We want to store the index of a cell in the cells list in this array and in this next. In other words, we want these references to cells to become addresses. So let's try this. Is index used at all? Is index used at all? It's not. So we're going to rename this um, we're going to rename index okay not that one but this one we're going to rename it address Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> I was just thinking to myself, is address really necessary? But it is, because if you've got a linked list of cells, um, you don't actually know the address of the cell that you're looking at necessarily. Wait, yeah you do. It's the cell's address. I'll, 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 I'll rethink this in a little while, but anyway. Um, we've got address, and right. What address is the equivalent of null? Well, you might say, if we wanted to, we could call null uh, the, the address of negative one. It's like there's nothing here. But actually, I'm gonna give it the, uh, the value zero. If you are trying to use a, um, a reference, if you're trying to use a, an address, uh, to a cell, and it is equal to zero, we're going to say that's not valid. So, um, we're going to put make cell in, here we go, null, um, and first state, cell state dot dead, might as well, um, x and y of zero and zero. Doesn't really matter. This really doesn't matter. But we are giving num cells an initial value of one to correspond with that. Cool. And so we're going to have to go through and turn every neighbor into a lookup into the cells array and into an address. So let's go ahead and do that. 
paper. I keep leaving the H out. There we go. Neighbor. Okay, let's start here. This is an initialize. We're creating our cells. We get the neighbor. Instead of instead of setting neighbor like this, we're gonna say neighbor ad um, address. There we go. So we're storing addresses in the um, in the neighbor list on a cell. And then when we look here, sorry, one second. There we go. <clears throat> so everywhere we use neighbors, here we go. So neighbor equals cell neighbors underscore plus i. And neighbor. So we're going to change this to. Yeah, we're going to allow neighbor to be an address. So for now, we're going to rename neighbor to neighbor address, just to make it more obvious as we read this that these are addresses. So neighbor address is cell neighbors plus i. We don't want neighbor address here. We want cells neighbor address is wire. Okay, great. And then first new head is not null, it's null all caps, null. Which actually, you know what, I'll call this null address just for now. There we go, okay. While we're at it, cell here goes from let cell equal, t um, yeah, sorry, one second. Yeah, while we're at it, we might as well switch... ...next to null address as well. Okay. Okay, excuse me. So here, cell is first head. So cell is going to become cell address. And every place that we use cell, here, hang on, I'm gonna undo a bunch of stuff. This would be easier, by the way, in a language that is typed because the type checker would make it easier to determine what things have been turned from references into integers. So like TypeScript or Hacks or other languages um, that have the notion of types uh, would be able to call out wherever I make a mistake. Oh right, null becomes null address. Okay, let's do this again. So cell cell address everywhere. Uh, does that have to happen here? Sorry, one second. Um, so in here, so in initialize, you know, this data structure that we've got here is working along with cell grid. And we're going to kind of preserve these. We're going to say Here, sorry, one second. Const init cells. Cool. And then down here we're going to say cells equals init cells. This is a little bit of preemptive work. We know that at the end of the day, cells is going to be a way different kind of d a data structure. Um, but we still use this init cells data structure to initialize the simulation. Um, so eventually this is going to become a conversion of this data structure into this one. Um, but while we're at it, 
This allows us to name cell. Sorry, one second. In it cell. In it. Oops. In it cell. Yeah, that should be fine. So that when we go through the rest of the file and rename things called cell, right, which are which we're changing all over the place from um, a reference to an address, um, we are going to be able to rely on the um, the runtime errors complaining that cell doesn't exist anymore, like this. Um, cell address. There we go. And here we go. Neighbor becomes neighbor address. And so now the JavaScript compiler is going to Plain at us. I'm going to switch back into Firefox because um, Safari doesn't have very good compile errors when a project contains um, modules. Here we go. Cell address is not defined. Perfect. That's going to help us better keep track of um, where we are using cells and cell addresses. So up here. Um, before we fix all that, we're going to also start changing these. So everywhere that there's a null, we're going to decide whether it's a null or a null address. This should be null addresses. Those should be null. That's null. That's null. Neighbor isn't null address. First head, null address. Last head, null address. Address, null 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 address. There we go. So now the only nulls we have are turbo start time, turbo timeout, restored render, first state, restored render, and turbo timeout. Okay, cool. And so now we're basically going to swat it flies. Whenever we... Oh. Oh, for Pete's sake. Why aren't we seeing JavaScript errors? That's weird. Maybe it's deciding that it's global. Okay. Um, annoying, but okay. So, num cells i, so cells i, cell address equals i. That happens in a couple places, doesn't it? Nope, maybe just here. Cell address is I. In here, we've got... Yep, that's fine. Cell address. So here we need to change cell to cell address. Here we need to change neighbor into neighbor address. There we go.
in here we need to change cell into cell address. Same here, cell address. And it should fail. Stupendously. Yep. And so now, cell address or neighbor address, followed by an open curly bracket, needs to be wrapped in a curly brace, and we look it up in cells. Not working. Okay, let's debug. Starting with engine.js. Um, okay. Oh, it's because there's a while loop somewhere. Okay. Next equals cell. That needs to become cell address. That was in reset. I bet that was it. So the reason we weren't seeing any runtime errors, we're still not seeing any, are we? No, we're not. There is a while loop somewhere in engine that's not ending, but we're gonna find out where it is. Nope, don't print, don't print, that's weird. Okay, Firefox then. Debugger. Engine.js. Nope, Th that while loop is causing trouble. So let's start where we know that the app starts, which is here in initialize. We're going to comment out reset. You can go into engine. No. Nope, still buggy. Okay, we need a different approach to this. I'm going a little too fast. Engine.js. Okay, let's try this again. I'd like these to be on separate lines, please. Okay. Const null address equals zero. Oh, right. <laughs> Make cell null address. Um, that's probably why. Null address um, cell state dot dead zero zero. Num cells is one. Const init cells. Now I'll just I'll just keep calling it cells for now. Um, cell 
So this should work, and it does. Engine.js, and it loads. We're going to take this opportunity to set a breakpoint. Okay. There. Perfect. We're going to try this again. We're just going to try replacing neighbors with these at first. So this is in initialize. Neighbor is that. We're going to change this to isn't null address cell neighbors plus equals neighbor that's fine and then cell num neighbors okay and we're going to do this again so cell neighbor neighbor e oh neighbor underscore let's see where else we what oh neighbors right okay neighbors plus i, neighbor, and this becomes cells neighbor. And for now, everywhere that we do equals neighbor, we're going to do cells neighbor. Yeah, let's try that. Nope, we botched it. Null dress. Null dress. So this should work. Nope. Oh, yeah, neighbor isn't null. Okay, right, cell grid, my bad. Cell grid contains cells, not indices. So if neighbor isn't null, then um, neighbor index, which as I said, gets renamed to address. Yeah, address. Okay. Okay. Neighbor. And so in here, neighbor gets the cells treatment. And it fails pretty quickly. Let's find out why. So reset was fine, but now we need to look this up. Cell neighbors plus i, cells neighbor. First new head, that's why, right. For now, we pass in cells neighbor. There we go, and we're back off to the races. Phew. Okay. I should review what I just did. 
We just turned neighbor here into an address. And everywhere we need to turn an address into a reference, we are wrapping it in curly braces and pre, um, prepending cells. We are looking up this address in the cells list. Okay, so now we can take this. Okay, replacing. Yeah. Replacing object references with integer addresses in cell neighbor lists. So that's the first step. Now we need to do the hard work of turning every next and first and last from a reference into a, an address. Which is probably where this stuff was going wrong before. So next becomes null address, first head, first tail, and again, first state, that's fine, neighbor isn't null, uh, no, that needs to stay because of cell grid, first head, null, first tail, null, last head, last tail, there we go. First head is null address, first tail is null address. Okay, so we're gonna start, we're gonna go method by method. So we're gonna start with initialize. Um, initialize doesn't care about next at all, good. Um, we can move on to reset. For reset, first head, first tail, last head and last tail need to reference um, need to reference addresses so again we're going to turn cell into I and everywhere that we have cell here we're going to replace it with cells cell like that and everywhere that we have a first head, okay, that should be fine. And last head, that should be fine because this is an address now. Yep, and then next, okay, so in here, uh, first head is never referenced. First tail is never referenced, but last head, next, so we need this to be, here, these two need to be cells, last head, next, cells, last head, tails, uh, last tail, next. So that ought to work. Let's give it a shot. Nope, something's going wrong. Let's find out. Oh, it's calling render. Um, so let's jump over into render. Okay, so cell is first head isn't null, needs to be null address, and then cell equals cells cell next, and then cells cell grid index. Let's try that. There we go. Okay. So now initialize is working and reset is working and render is working. Let's go quickly through our references to null. 
and make sure that they are all what we want. That one's fine. Reset is fine. Update, of course, we're going to need to revisit. And then stop turbo. Fantastic. I'm going to stage these changes because we are okay with them. Here, I'm going to run prettier. Why not? No difference. Okay. Now we need to go into update and very carefully deal with these nulls. Yep, all those can be null address. Cells first head, cell equals, so everywhere that we have cell. We need to turn into cells of that. And let's read through it carefully. So cell loops through these, okay. Num neighbors, yep. Um, we get the neighbor with cells neighbor, yep, that's fair, that's fine. First new head is cells neighbor, yep, that's fine. Last new head next equals, okay. So last new head here, everywhere that we do a next equals, we need to be careful. So here, cells, last new head next. Cells, last new head next. And then here, first new head equals cells, first new head next. That's fine. Cells, cell next. So you might think, oh, well, this is a reference to a cell, but it's not. This next is an address. So this needs to be wrapped and we call cells again. And then here, basically all of these need to be wrapped in a cells. And then cells, cell next, next needs to be cells. Cells, next, next, geez. Cells, cell headcount, yep. Cells, cell is wire. Let's try that. Nope, not working. Let's find out why. First head is an address, okay, that should be fine. Ah, we need to change these cells neighbor back. into neighbor. Let's try that. It's running now. That's a good sign. So now neighbor is an address, but also first new head is an address. Okay. Cells, last new head, next, equals neighbor. Yep, that's fine. Last new head equals neighbor. That's fine. That's fine. So I, I am confident in this loop. 
Last new head, sells next. I'm confident in that. While, first new head is... Here we go. That's a problem. Sells first new head. Let's try that. Not out of the woods yet. Oh, let me clear cash just to be sure. Yeah, still got a problem. Sells first new head. Yep. Sell. Yep. Sells, sell next. And sells, sell next. Head count. Yep. Sells, sells, sell next. Head count is equal to zero. Okay, there is something going wrong up here. Cells to mem, which is short for memory, and up here I'm gonna say const cells in initialize, and there we go. Mem equals cells. I'm just gonna make it a little easier to read. Same logic, same bug. But now it's like, this is a memory lookup. From the top. out for now to see if the... because remember this code just um, gets rid of any new head, uh, any any wire that is adjacent to a head that has too many neighbors. So if we ignore this test for now, we can see if the bug is actually there. It is! Okay. So the bug is isolated to somewhere between this open comment and this closed comment. So I will move this down here. Okay. Let's go through this one more time. For let cell equals first new head, cool. Cells equal to null address, cool. Cell equals mem cell next, cool. While mem 
mem cell next. So mem cell is a cell. Next is an address. This is a cell. Oh, that's why. I think. Let's try that. Nope. Okay. While mem cell next isn't null address. And mem cell next mem headcount is greater than two, then mem cell next mem headcount is zero. There, let's try that. There we go, okay. What a rigmarole. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need to step back and let's see if we can make sense of what we just did. Because we did a lot. Null address is now used everywhere. In fact, I'm going to rename it null now because we know what it is. We have just replaced, oh, mem. That was weird. No change, okay. We have just replaced every reference from one cell to another with the address of that cell. And any time we need to access a cell, we look it up in mem. Which is why everything is now like mem cell this, mem cell that. Um, it's readable in most places, like this. Reset, um, mem, you know, reset state, we want to look up the first state property on a cell, so we do mem cell and then first state. And then here, um, we want to look up the grid index. Uh, of a cell, so mem cell grid index. So that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, next is weird because it goes from a cell back into an address. So we are assigning an address to an address property on a cell. And then it gets a little more wild and update because we have nested mems. Let's see how deep the nest can go. Just two, okay. And that's in here. So while mem cell next, as in while cell.next isn't null, and its head count is greater than two, we reset its head count and set the next to the next next. <laughs> just like before, it's just a little harder to read because we're doing all this memory wrapping stuff. But this is going to get simpler. A little bit, because a whole lot of these um, adjacent curly brackets are going to disappear. And in my opinion, it's going to become easier to read. So, replaced all, what do you call them? Replaced all references to cells with addresses of cells. Cool. I do wonder if index is necessary. Here, let's look up index again. Oh right, it's been renamed address. Hang on. This should be address. Okay, and then index is gone, so I will just stick that pretty real quick. Okay, amend the previous commit. There we go. Okay. So where is address used? It's used here. Neighbor address. 
the address of this neighbor could be derived from here. Yeah, hang on. I could get rid of address. Uh, post message type debug and args um, no you know what hang on we know the address of the neighbor because the address is oh no we don't the address is random or it's arbitrary it's the lookup into the array of cells, which does not have a correspondence. Okay, yeah, this is fine. Um, it's silly that we only need it in one place, but address make cell num cells. Grid is cell. Could cell grid be the index instead? It can. Cool. Okay. Let's try this. We get rid of address and get rid of it here and subtract one from all of these. Boop. No need for that. Address. So, cell grid is no longer going to contain. Um, is no longer going to contain cells. It's going to contain the index. There we go. So then, cell grid. Ah, you know what? We should do this. Um, array width dot fill null. Yep, that's fine. And then neighbor isn't null, then just neighbor. Let's try that. Yeah, cool. Okay. So we just got rid of a property we didn't need. Are there any other properties we don't need? Um, grid index, and then x, and then y. We could get rid of these. And we will. Okay, let's do this. Um, decrement by one, decrement by one. So now, if we want the X and Y, I got rid of X and Y, that's why. Um, here we go, so cell X, cell Y, so const grid index, yep, equals um, cell grid index. Y equals uh, grid index math.floor grid index over width and then X is grid index oh sorry no underscore here grid index modulo width I think let's try that yes it works again cool Now you might be saying, you're throwing away a whole bunch of uh, computation. Oh, sorry, you're throwing away a whole bunch of work that you already did. Um, 
just to, you know, get these out of this make cell stuff. But actually, if you think about it, this is like a big beefy chunk of memory, and reducing it this way helps um, grid index. Grid index. It helps reduce the memory um, footprint of the app. Boom. Uh, yeah. Broke something. X times width plus X. Grid index. Oh, my bad. There we go. Grid index. There you are. The computation that we're talking about, that's, you know, unnecessary. It only happens when we first initialize anyway. And we can afford it, so I'm not too worried about it. I'd much rather make this a smaller thing, right? So let's see, are all of these still necessary? Grid index is necessary, because that goes to the view to light up the correct pixel in the image. First state is necessary. Does it, does it have to be here? Might moving first state... I won't overthink it for now, but I'll say this. Um, Consider rearranging properties in cells. Move out the ones that don't have to be there. First state. Um, you know, another thing is Ideally, everything in here um, is used uh, at the same time, right? First state is only used for reset. Uh, neighbors and num neighbors are used together all the time, along with next, and head count and is wire. But grid index is only used in render and, um, and initialize. Right? So, and reset, I guess. Okay, let's look at this again. So, grid index is used in initialize, which we're not too worried about, in reset, which happens pretty infrequently, and only gets called if we pass in a restored render, which we're not currently doing anyway. Um, and, of course, in render. There we go. So, we could arguably move out grid index and first state into a separate data structure so that the stuff in here is only stuff that's used all together. But that's that's low priority. That's something I'll experiment with maybe at the end of the uh, at the end of the uh, stream. Okay. So what all did we just do? We removed un, uh, redundant data in cells to compact their memory footprint. Cool. Okay, let's see how we're doing. We converted the cells to arrays, yep. Convert neighbors, convert next. Okay, so the next step So, you know, now all our cells are arrays, right? The next step to, to all this is we are going to change mem from cells to cells.flat, which is going to take the array of arrays, that is cells, and is going to turn it into one long array that contains all of these values in order. What does that mean? Well, it means that pretty much everywhere we put 
a less than next to a, uh, a closed bracket next to a an open bracket in the code. Let me just make sure. Not an initialize, because this cell grid is like the uh, the initialization data structure, and that one's fine. But this one, we're going to turn into a plus. In other words, the cell is now um, an address, right? Uh, and we're going to add to that address in memory, we're going to add the offset of the first date data. And here, 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 and here. I'm doing this slowly for dramatic effect. Is it working? Okay. The problem is these addresses that we are looking at um they used to be the it, like the uh, the index of the cell in the array of cells, but that's not what they are anymore. Oh shoot! Hang on, I'm gonna undo all that because I included a mistake in the code. Sorry, one second. Okay, before I do flat. Okay, here we go. Grid index zero, first date one. You know, I'm actually going to knock these down here. Um, and next, and head count is wire. Okay, so I'll do um, zero, and then eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Let's just make sure that still works. Nope, I broke something. Zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, hang on. So that works. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I guess I was right all along. Hang on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 minus 1 plus 8, so 6 plus 8 is 14, minus 1 is 13. Okay, so this actually is the correct memory pattern. Sorry, I was second guessing these numbers that I put here. Um, so let's, <laughs> let me just redo the, the stuff that I undid real quick. Cells.flat, and close brace, open brace, becomes plus everywhere except for in the top initialize function okay now the only thing is right the addresses need to be this const cell size equals is wire plus one so is wire is the last property when we add one we get the total size of a cell which is 14 integers in a row so cell size is where we go with this. The cell is the number of cell at i. We, we need to multiply by cell size, right? And cell grid num cells times cell size. Let's see if that does the trick. It does. OK. So now. We no longer have separate cells, or rather, we briefly do. And by the way, here is that last um, delete unused cells data structure in engine. We're going to go in here, cells equals null. So that should get rid of cells pretty quickly, is my hope. Localhost, in network, we disable cache. 
and in memory we oh wait no there's an error <laughs> huh why where am I using cells other than yeah, that's weird cells dot flat cells equals null oh cells is a const Cells.length equals null. Excuse me. The whole point of this exercise <laughs> is to eliminate that big array we saw. We still have an array. Snapshot. And the count is still going up. I wonder why. I will investigate these guys after we finish our um, performance optimization. Okay, so we have um, convert cells list into a contiguous buffer of integers. So if you think about it, all the data that makes up our cells in our simulation is now just in one long array called mem. Let's see how it performs in Safari. And I'm going to make the window a little higher up so that you can see it underneath, or rather behind, um, the... Does that work? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now when we press play and turn on... There we go. So we went from, I think, 1300 to 2000 simulations per second. Let's compare that with the live version. Yeah, it's going quite a bit faster now than what was on live, right? Um, and now here's the secret sauce. Mem here, like this mem array, why is it an array? You know, we store a lot of things in arrays in JavaScript, but in this case, Everything in mem is an integer. Not just an integer, but an, an, an integer greater than or equal to zero. So we could replace mem with a, um, a typed array, MDN typed array. What's cool about typed arrays in JavaScript is uh, they don't need to make the assumptions that arrays do. They don't need all the same functions that arrays have. Uh, they're literally just a view into a contiguous chunk of memory. Um, what's a good... Here we go. So we want some kind of uint array, but our numbers are bigger than 255. Um, we can try uint 16 array. And we can try uint32 array. And everything else we don't need. So let's try uint16 array. Uh, dot from, I think. Typed array from MDN. Yes. So that will tur turn our array. There we go. It is not happy with that. Let's try 32. I wonder what the problem is. Something... No? That was just... 
guess we couldn't use you in 16. <laughs> Our numbers were uh, too big, I guess. I'll need to think about that. Anyway, let's give it a shot. And now we are at 3,000 updates per second while live streaming in, in Safari. When streaming is off, it goes, for me, as high as 5,100. And again, let's compare that with the version that is on uh, GitHub right now. So we're talking about a difference of, let's see, let's say 1170 is the live and, oh, hang on. Let's do them one at a time, shall we? Quit that, close that, eh, close that, okay. Okay, 3,500 generations per second versus on live. Fourteen hundred. In this case, it just so happens to be two and a half times faster. By switching from a plain old array of objects to a typed array of scalarized, flattened objects whose properties are all unsigned integers. Not bad. Pretty small change. Significant speed boost. Um, the engine is now two to two and a half times faster than when uh, then, um, then when it, um, when its data structure, when its cells were objects, were an array of objects. Not bad. We've still got an hour to go, so, um, let's see what else we can do. Again, the data in memory, the stuff that's actually changing and that we read and write all the time are these. We could move these out. So let's do that. So we've got mem, and we've got hmm. I'll call it all grid indices and all first states. Okay. So, in here, cells. Here's what we can do. We can turn a cell into an object again
This, huh, this is incredible. Hang on. <laughs> So, we're going to say mem grid index first state, cool, and then That turns this into an empty array. <laughs> Basically. I mean, for now, I'm gonna, gonna do um, zero, zero, to do, remove, to keep the size right. So zero, one, sorry, one, two, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now make cell cells, num cell, yep. Um, here we go. So everywhere that we have an array, we're going to do dot mem. But instead of grid index here, so mem grid index here becomes grid index. get to that in a second. Um, but we are getting rid of these. Okay. Because all grid indices, all grid indices equals um, uint32array.from cells.flat. We're going to edit these in a second. And then all first states. Okay. So cells dot map cell cell dot mem and then here cell dot grid index and this is cell dot first state. going to do, let's see, cell plus grid index, we're instead going to do all grid indices, cell. Yep. Cool. And then first state. second. Initialize. Okay. Cell dot first state. Here we go. Mem cell plus first state equals all first states cell. So now first state underscore is unused and grid index underscore is unused. Let's see what this does. Oh, that's the version online. Let's try that again. It breaks it. Uh, 
flat unexpected. Flat. And of course it won't say where, but probably here. Okay. Oh, that's why. Dot flat. Ooh. Fancy, but broken. Change make cell. Okay, so instead of cells containing more than is necessary, I'm gonna say const first states equals cell state dot dead const grid in disease equals zero. Num cells is one. Yep. No, that's good. Okay, and then cell equals make cell is just going to be this. Yes. Cells num cells equals make cell. Um, first states num cells equals first state, and grid and disease num cells equals y times width plus x. causes them to need their index again to look up their hmm I still think it's worth it so then make cells becomes index, index. Const index equals zero. Make cell just becomes this index flat States down here. This becomes cells dot flat. This becomes first states uh, grid indices dot flat, and this becomes first states dot flat. Oh, that's not even necessary. There we go. Grid index equals not cell dot grid index. In fact, cell dot mem needs to go away. Okay. This is grid indices of cell index. There we go. So then all grid indices, cell, needs to be turned into all grid indices, cells, cell, plus index. And then first states, cells, cell, 
plus index. Let's try that. No. Couldn't find variable cells. Oh, it's not cells. Sorry. This is mem. And this is mem. There we go. Looks pretty good. I think an error just got thrown. Not sure though. Let's take another look. And reset. Interesting. There's an error somewhere. Probably in reset. I will look into that in a second. What's interesting is it does not happen. Turn on turbo, turn it back off, turn it on, turn it back off, reset. Not working. I wonder what's going on in reset. Yeah, you know what, we don't need index. Because we can perform math on here. Mem cell plus index. Can just be uh, cell divided by size of cell size. So actually, index is not needed. Make cell can just do to do remove. Cell divided by cell size. Oh, hang on, cell. This becomes let i equals zero, i is less than num cells, i plus plus. This is grid indices i. Cells i. And so now we can remove these. Zero, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thank you. 
And now make cell, frankly, oh well, it doesn't need these. <laughs> make cell, like this is just an array of zeros. So it's really array um, cell size dot fill null. kind of funny. And so now make cell Oh, whoops. Make cell. So basically cells equals array num cells dot fill uh, num cells times cell size dot fill null and then cells I times cell size. Let's try that. No, that broke it. <laughs> um, cannot access uninitialized variable. Oh, because of up here. There we go. Uh, right, cells flat can just be cells. I think. Let's see, cells item cell size. That's right. Plus neighbors, etc. That works. change. Are we going to change mem? We are, only because it's everywhere. <laughs> uh, let's see what it does if we rename it to all cells. Oh yeah, this is still really difficult to read, so I'll keep it at mem. Okay. Let's refresh. Ah, one moment.
Where were we? Right. So the next thing we need to do is figure out why reset doesn't work after turbo like that so what we're gonna do is in engine in reset we'll set a breakpoint Set. We're just going to step through it and see what happens. It's just a set. Cool. Num cells is the same. All first states cell over cell size switch there we go that makes sense tons of wires Actually, here's what we'll do. We're going to rule out that the problem is in render. Okay, so that was fine. And reset. Reaches render, and it works. Turbo. Set. And it does reach render, so the issue is somewhere in the render function. Zero. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> that seems to work just fine. Let's break this away into a separate thing. Turn it on. and reset. It did work, but maybe it's slow? Let's delete all the breakpoints and try it again. Play. We're going to wait until this goes to 2. Okay. And reset. stash these changes and see if the bug um, exists in the version where everything was contiguous. Play. Reset. Yes. The bug exists in the regular version as well. So this. Reset. Try this. Let's comment out this stuff, which involves Turbo Active. This might be a bug that has existed for a while, for all we know. So there's two. Reset. No, it's not that. Hmm. 
Grüße. That works. Let's get it to a point where the number two is visible. I'm going to run this again, but I'm going to keep track of the generation. I think it's like 11,000 or something. That number two shows up. There we go. So let's say 11,700. And we are just going to give render a vacation. like this. And we are going to run it until it is at 11,000. 11,700. And now reset. That worked. So the bug is definitely somewhere in here. Cell is first head, cell isn't null, cell is cell plus next. Maybe this is a problem? No. We can also do this. Type debug, args is heads. And then tails. So this loop never stops, and that's why it seems to be taking so long. So cell plus next. something we can do because we know that this isn't happening in render reset is doing something so in reset here let me uh, reset engine There's a bug somewhere in the reset function. So 
So here, we're going to say uh, cells first head plus next. Oops, mem first head plus next. We're going to say if cell is equal to first head um, post message type debug args loop it's very strange first head is null first tail is null last head is null last tail is null cell. What if I did this? Ah, what if I did this? Yeah, I bet this is the problem. Okay. I'm surprised this problem lasted as long as it did. Um, mem cell plus next equals null. bet that's the issue. When we reset, we want to null all of the lists. Yeah. That's weird. That's a that's a bug that probably exists in the live version. Yeah, that fixed it. Okay, let's look for it in the live version. have to wait for the generation to reach 11,700. Doesn't take too long. And reset. Yes! Okay! Cool! <laughs> Unfortunate, but cool. So... <clears throat> we just fixed a bug that was in the old version of the engine in the new version. The reset function needs to set the next cell, well, set a cell's next address to null. Now, let's apply that stash again. Here we are. Now remember, in, that, in this stash, we put all the grid indices in their own thing. And we put the first states in their own thing. Averaging three thousand seven hundred, three thousand eight hundred generations per second. Almost 4,000 generations per second while live streaming. So, why am I at all interested, you might ask, in ejecting the grid indices and first states from the cells? What's what's the point? What's the big idea? Um, well, basically, at this point, we're taking into account the fact that um, computers processors, give me a second, um, CPU, L1, cache, L2, L3, RAM, diagram.
Here we go. Let's look at this Comic Sans image. So the CPU is where all the math and logic is performed in every program that doesn't make use of another processor. Everything that just uses a CPU um, needs to perform its logic here. And in order to do that, the data that is being calculated, or sorry, the data that is being oper operated on, like the input, needs to go from the memory of the prog of the uh, of the computer um, into the CPU. But modern processors have these caches that speed up the lookup of data based on um, being in the same part of memory. And so the smaller the model is, right, like basically by taking the things that we're not doing a whole lot with and removing them from the data that we are uh, operating on, um, we are increasing the likelihood that, th that information that is in memory that we need to do math on uh, ends up in a cache closer to the CPU where things are faster. I forgot to mention, the L1 cache, sorry, <laughs> the registers where information is stored in the CPU are faster access than the L1 cache, which is faster than L2, which is faster if it exists than L3, which is faster than the main memory. Um, we're talking about like orders of magnitude difference between these. Um, so it's my hope, I'm not, I'm, this isn't guaranteed whatsoever, but it's my hope that by shrinking the size of the chunks of data that are actually being referenced in the update functions, we can take advantage of the memory cache, the, the L1 and L2 caches of uh, CPUs. I know how particular that sounds, but most processors have this kind of um, this kind of structure, uh, and even if something didn't have that structure, it's not a huge penalty to store these values in a separate um, data structure, especially because they're not being used most of the time. So all first states is only used in reset and initialize. Um, and all grid indices is used in initialize, of course, but is used in reset and is used in render. So no big deal. And of course, it's only used in reset in our weird uh, leftover uh, restore, you know, restore logic, which is handy, but we're not really using it right now. Pretty damn fast. I just cursed on live stream. My bad. Whoopsie. Okay. So, let's treat ourselves. This is impressive, right? We've got a whole lot of uh, speed in the web worker. Um, we've, it's slowing down, isn't it? Nope, it's speeding up. Okay, I'm not gonna look too closely at that. Okay, so <clears throat> the, uh, okay, after the stream, I'll investigate why this number keeps going down. I'm not too worried about it though. So, um, the speed that we're seeing is on a separate thread. We aren't worried about the performance of the main thread whatsoever. Uh, and we are way under budget. So let's do some special effects. First, I will delete this. Okay, glow. Oh, and I'm done with that. Glow. So, um... We've got this base layer, which is the black and gray, and the active layer, which is the yellow and orange. We're going to clone the active layer and call the bottom one glow. 
and in paper.js um, drawings.base drawings.active and we're going to call this drawings.glow uh, we don't need to okay active drawing dot pixels right right so a glow is like in our, for our purposes we can make a glow happen by just taking the image that contains these orange and yellow pixels and blurring it and putting it underneath or on top of um, the other uh, yeah on top of the uh, the active layer so that's all we're gonna do this active drawing we're gonna say drawings dot glow dot context and then here uh, active drawing image data that's fine um, so we are just uh, basically we are piggybacking on active drawing and when we do that it looks the exact same but we can go into layout and in paper canvas paper canvas dot glow we're gonna say opacity um, 0 0.5 Maybe. I'm going to comment that out. Um, filter. Blur. 10 pixels. Um, let's see what that does. Ah! You see that? When we zoom in, the blur is reduced to the size of the pixels. When we zoom out, it kind of blends together. And it's like, it's a nice warm glow in my opinion. Let's try, um, let's try 20 pixels. That's probably too much. Yeah, 20 pixels, it's a little vague. So, 15. And, you know, notice that it comes at effectively no cost, right? Because um, everything we're doing with it is, like, even if it was expensive, our frame time when we're rendering this thing, uh, timelines, record, and stop. Okay. It wasn't rendering because it was in the background, but here, let me pause that for a second. If we look at this, oopsie. If we look, if we look at this, that's weird that it's zooming in there. There we go. Um, frames. Nope, events. Forget it, we're gonna do Firefox. <laughs> Localhost. Glows, Web Inspector, um, Performance, Record, and Stop, and Flame Chart. Like, this is the main thread. We still have so much idle time. Not at all worried about that glow. So, we're putting it in. Um, we're done with that. We put in the glow. Oh yeah, let me, um, let me put the changes in from engine first. Um, oh, and run prettier. What did it change in engine? White space, no big deal. Okay, separated uh, grid indices and um, <clears throat> you know, we could even move the grid indices into the main thread. And that would speed up the uh, <laughs> that would speed up the simulation because it wouldn't have to work so hard to render. 
I'll do that after uh, after the stream though. Separated grid indices and um, separated grid indices and first states from the rest of the cell data to uh, to hopefully. Um, you know, let's look at memory real quick. I know you gotta go. Just give me a quick second. Snapshot. Still a bunch of arrays. I'm gonna look into this. Those should be gone by now. Snapshot. Snapshot. Separated grid indices and first states from the rest of the cell data to hopefully take advantage of um, L1, what do you call it? L1 cache. It's a kind of cache. CPU cache take advantage of CPU caches, to take better advantage of CPU caches. Speculation. Okay. Oh, done with glow. Um, maybe make it a little more subtle. Let's try, yeah, let's just see what 0 0.5 does. No point. It's like it's not even there. 0.7. Yeah, again, no point in that. There we go. Das blinking lights. Okay, that's enough for today. Added glowing um, electron heads and tails now glow with a dedicated blurred glow canvas in the paper. Cool and I'm going to tag it. That's right, so. This one gets tagged strategy four. And this one gets tagged episode, what is it, eight, I think. Yep, episode eight. And you know what? We are going to delete the off-screen canvas um, branch that didn't really benefit us at all. And we're going to push. Well, that just about does it. Pretty happy with today's outcome. It looks good, it goes fast, fantastic. And as fast as it looks in here, um, it goes even faster when you're running it on your own machine with uh, without streaming turned on. Anyway, thanks for hanging in there. Um, I'm not sure what I'll be doing in the next stream. Let's see. Yeah, I got some bugs to fix, for sure. Um, this will be fun. Um, making like a history of implementations. Because um, because the engine is in a... Uh, because it's in its own... Um, 
web worker, uh, we can have different versions of the engine that correspond more or less with the different strategies that we've employed that shed light on how differently they perform. I think that would be pretty neat. And we could give different engines, let's see, load different engines, uh, engine specifies its color scheme, its default color scheme. That'd be cool. Anyway, that just about does it for, uh, for me tonight. From the skybox in the corner of the level, this is Res Mason thanking you for hanging out and signing off.